<laughs> Digging deeper now, let's turn to CNN senior political analyst and former presidential advisor David Gergen and also Mary Frances Berry, who was named chairperson of the Civil Rights Commission by President Bill Clinton in 1993. David, I want to read something that uh, blogger Andrew Sullivan uh, wrote on his website. He said, and I quote, the Clinton campaign's decision not to reject or denounce Geraldine Ferraro's racial gaffe strikes me as a conscious and deliberate one. Ferraro is now on the networks and airways amping up the volume, and Clinton in classic passive-aggressive mode is merely disagreeing. Isn't this obviously about Pennsylvania? Isn't this classic Rove Morris politics to keep designating Obama a beneficiary of affirmative action and Clinton a victimized white woman in order to racially polarize a primary where Clinton needs white <coughs> ethnic votes? Do you believe this is conscious and deliberate, David? <laughs> No, I don't. And I think it's just getting ratcheted up by all sides now in very unfortunate ways. I, I think two things can be said about in a positive way about Geraldine Ferraro. First, uh, she has also said about herself uh, that she would not have been the vice presidential candidate had she not been a woman. Uh, so, you know, so she is consistent in that sense. And secondly, I think she made a wise decision today to step down from this campaign. Having said that, what she said was highly offensive. Uh, you know, if someone had said about Hillary Clinton, you know, if she weren't a woman, she wouldn't be here. Uh, people in the Clinton camp would have clearly taken uh, offense at that uh, because Hillary Clinton is, yes, a woman, but she has many, many other accomplishments that make her a strong candidate. And similarly, it's offensive uh, to say, that if, as she said, that if he were not black, he would not be here. He would not be winning this if he were not black. Yes, he is black, but he has many, many other uh, talents that he has brought to this campaign, inspirational qualities that, that, that do transcend race. To, oh, to Andrew ah. Sullivan's point, does it hurt Obama to have e even this discussion, I mean, to have this brought up by surrogates in the Clinton campaign, uh, to have these kind of, this focus on race, does that hurt him? I, I don't think uh, Obama should have bitten it. I think that he should have taken a pass on it because he's a candidate who's one of the things about him is that he transcends a racial category. So here he has been for the last couple of days sitting around talking about race and being slighted by an old uh, white woman who once ran for vice president and going over and over again. I think he would have been better off just to take a pass on it. I, I, Anderson, can I just respectfully uh, uh, disagree with that? I think Barack Obama had every reason to go after these comments uh, because they're so reminiscent of what we are hearing just after New Hampshire and going into the South Carolina primary and just after the South Carolina primary. And those remarks by the Clintons and by some of their surrogates trying to sort of marginalize him as simply as simply a black and, and diminishing him in that sense, trying to put him in a box. You know, I think backfired on uh, the Clinton team, and I think it was one of the turning points in this campaign that helped Barack Obama. But I'm saying that if uh, Obama had wanted to, since this was in the Daily Breeze or wherever it was, he could have just taken, and since it's Ferraro, and since there's no evidence that she's a racist of some kind, uh, it would have been easy to take a pass on it, but if they're in a mode uh, that they're going to attack back no matter what anybody says, then they can go ahead and do it. But I do not think, David, it's in the category of what happened after New Hampshire. It isn't in the category of what happened with Bob Johnson. It isn't in the category of any of those things. I wouldn't put you don't see in a that Mary, category. You don't see a pattern here. I don't think the Clinton people, you know, told Geraldine Ferraro to go out and make those uh, comments. But, but not a pattern necessarily on race, but a pattern of focusing on differences, which is what Andrew yes, Sullivan's point yes, is. David, yes, do you that, see a pattern of that? Yes, I see that. David, do you see a pattern in that? Absolutely. And, I, you know, of course, his his blackness and, of course, her uh, f uh, feminineness uh, uh, are woman. elements of this <laughs> campaign. But I think to isolate that and to say that's the reason this person is doing well is, I, I think, just wrongheaded. I think it brings race and gender to the front of the conversation where, and, you know, and I think it's just very distracting. And it is intended. It's very clearly intended to diminish the candidacy of Barack Obama and and it was offensive because it was injecting race as a way to diminish him. Mm. David, I don't think that anybody who mentions that Hillary Clinton is a woman and emphasizes that she is and that she's the first woman to get this far is somehow being divisive and injecting the gender. But, She's obviously a woman. He's obviously a black well, guy. What's clearly, wrong with but, but, that? But if, we say, if you, you would not accept it if I argue that if Hillary Clinton were not a woman, she wouldn't be doing this well. I just don't think that's true. No, that, I'm that, not that defending Geraldine yeah. Ferraro. I'm just saying that there's nothing wrong with calling attention to the fact that it would be historic because it would be the first woman. That's not woman, what she was doing. Or it would be the first black person. That yeah. would, that's not what she was doing. There are 
are ways to call attention to gender and to race, and there are ways not to call attention to gender and to race. And I, I think Ferraro's timing was wrong, and it's unfortunate that it happened this way, but I still don't put her in the category of being somehow racist. David, your I, final I, thought. I, I, she's not a racist, and I just want to finally say I want to salute Mary Mary for her. So, Ms. Mary has been an enormous advocate for civil rights in the country, so I respect her view. I happen to disagree with aspects of it. Uh,